Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Carl's Tech Shed. Right, what I've got for you today, as I promised in my last video, is uh, one of these little GPS units. Now, I picked up uh, 25 of these uh, in the summer. I paid about 50 quid for them on eBay. Um, the rest of them are in those metal crates just over there. Um, what they are, they're some sort of uh, GPS and Wi-Fi media player. So, um, for example, uh, I, I, when I googled it, I couldn't really find much about Node Explorer. Uh, so I went on YouTube and I came across a video, um, which I'll just show you the title here. Um, you, if you type that into Google, um, you'll find the video. You can watch it there. Um, basically, it's it's a it's a media player which downloads content over Wi-Fi and uh, locates you via GPS. So, for example, um, Kew Gardens down in South London used quite a few of these uh, a few years back and basically when someone went into a certain area it would download a video over Wi-Fi from their local network and uh, play it to you. So if you were standing in front of a building or uh, a certain part of the garden uh, it would uh, show you the history about it or something like that. So they, they were very, very much ahead of their time. They did uh, something equivalent, well, without the 3G connectivity, they did something similar to the modern smartphone in that they had Wi-Fi, GPS, media capabilities all built into one device. Now, uh, as I said, I looked on Google and I couldn't find anything. That's probably because the company went out of business a few years back. But um, this is a Node Explorer version 3.5. Um, what I'll do is I'll take this apart in a minute and let you have a look what's inside it. Um, there's no uh, obvious charging capability. There's uh, a docking port here of some type. There's also, which looks like a headphone socket there. One other thing, they're very, very rugged. Um, all of this around the edge, it looks like, um, well, it, it is plastic, but all around the edge here is uh, very solid rubber. Um, it almost feels like a like tyre rubber. It's incredibly, um, incredibly tough. Um, the only thing I noticed is that the screen is not protected. There's no um, there's no plastic over the screen or anything to prevent that from being um, damaged if it were dropped on a corner, for instance. If you dropped it on the ground and something smashed against the screen, it's there's nothing to protect it there. So um, that's one m major dev design flaw in my eyes. Um, I remember a few years back I had a Panasonic Toughbook, um, one of these sort of ruggedized laptops, and it even had like a piece of perspex over the LCD, which protected it from such from such damage, and uh, it was fantastic. But um, unfortunately, I think that's a, a trick they may have missed on here. Well, uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll try and open it up, and uh, we'll see what's inside it. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to remove this annoying strap, which is on two little clips here. There's also a GPS antenna, which I'm going to remove as well. Now this is all connected to a neck strap, which is uh, again quite, quite looks quite comfortable, um, but also quite rugged in that the cable's very well protected, and uh, it's also got a very, um, very heavy duty connector on the end there for the GPS antenna. It's all metal, there's no plastic on there, and even this bit here seems very solid, so there's no chance of that being damaged. Just whip this case off. One other thing I've just noticed on here, um, I can also see a build date of 0108, so uh, I, I'm guessing that's January 2008, so these are just under five years old, uh, would have been four and a half years old when I bought them. There we go, let's try and get the limbs, make sure all them screws are out. Oh, still one left in there. Okay, let's push them to one side, let's see if we can crack it open. There we go. Again, very... Uh, rugged design but unfortunately not doesn't look very waterproof although I could be wrong uh, let's have a look right it seems it does have like a rubber seal going all the way around the edge on the inside so it would um, would give some form of water protection uh, against moisture getting in there 
Now the first thing which we notice here is we've got uh, a Go Wi-Fi um, 802.11G compact flash card. So this is obviously the Wi-Fi, um, the Wi-Fi card here. Um, quite unusual to see this uh, slotted in here. Um, usually, I, I would have expected this to be built on board. You know, um, having a, a Wi-Fi chip on board, it probably would have been a lot cheaper uh, in the long run. But I suppose because they they didn't really make many of these. Uh, it was they probably found it was cheaper just to go and buy a load of these compact flash cards and just install a socket um, instead. Now down here we've got the Wi-Fi antenna which leads up to the top here. Um, now it's funny because we've got uh, a Wi-Fi connect um, Wi-Fi sorry GPS connector on here, um, but we've also got uh, this cable here, this uh, thick cable which leads up to the top uh, where it gives you an external one. So I'm not sure what this is here for. Maybe it was. Uh, Maybe they had a change of um, design of the case uh, after they'd manufactured the boards. Um, that's one possibility. Uh, right now in the back here we've got two of these batteries. Let's have a look what technology these are. These are lithium-ion 2200 uh, milliamp hours, uh, 3.7 volts, made in Korea. Uh, they're quite. They look quite well built, um, a, a lot better than some batteries I've seen, usually there's sort of these flat pack batteries which are in my eyes bloody awful, um, but these these genuinely look pretty good and also the fact they're they're pluggable uh, means that you could replace them if they uh, wear out at some point, so again quite a good design feature there. I'll plug that back in there, uh, we've got the same one over here, 3.7 uh, volts. Um, we've also got uh, an SD memory card here, which I will remove as well. Uh, this looks like a one gigabyte SanDisk. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's a SanDisk Ultra 2, one gigabyte. So uh, I'm guessing that would be for the um, for the operating software, um, because obviously all of the um, all of the content would be downloaded over Wi-Fi and stored in the RAM, which I'm guessing is going to be on the other side. Let me just bring this down a bit so you can have a closer look. Uh, as I said earlier, we've got the GPS receiver in here. Um, I'm not sure what these are for, uh, most likely for power management or something like that. Um, and then you've got the SD card here. I'll remove this S, uh, sorry, compact flash card, see if there's anything behind it. Let's have a quick peek. I doubt it because it's very close to the... Uh, very close to the main board. Let's have a look. Let's unplug these for a start, it might help. I'm not sure what's holding that. Uh, ah, that's what was holding it in. There was a small connector up here which is for the headphone socket and uh, that's actually on a small riser board so instead of having a cable that's just plugged directly into these these pins up here and uh, that was what was holding it in to start with. So let's take this out. Yeah, as, 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 as I assume there's nothing under there. Uh, it looks like there's been a bit of moisture getting into here at some point. There's uh, some residue on here but I don't think that would have caused any major damage. Doesn't look like any of the components have shorted out or anything, so um, this might still be okay to power up. And if we flip this over here, uh, let me rotate this, make it easier for orientation. You can uh, get an idea of uh, of where this is meant to go. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we've got these four push buttons on here. These are sort of tactile switches, but what's what's odd about them is that they've got this um, extra long um, button. On the on the outside. Now, this is not attached. This is actually built in, so they were designed um, like that. Now, if we pull this off, uh, what we'll actually find is we've got some uh, we've got some RAM here. We've got some Samsung RAM here that looks like um, I think they're going to be two, five, six meg chips. Let's have a look at those. Uh, yeah, judging by the part number, I'd say they're about two, five, six megs a piece. Um, we've also got some flash memory here. This is most likely going to be for firmware. We've got uh, a sharp. What is that now? Let's have a look. Let's have a closer look at that. That is a sharp LZ9 FC 22B. Yeah, that's most likely going to be the um, LCD controller. Uh, we've also got another chip here. That's um, what is that now? Let's have a closer look at that one. That is, oh there's no manufacturer's name on that, not that I can see anyway. Um, that's That looks like it's going to be the audio decoding chip, um, because that does tend to, the, the leads on that tend to go off to this riser board which connects to the headphone output. Uh, now what's more, and last but certainly not least, 
is the main processor in here, which is uh, an AMD Alchemy based processor um, running at, uh, it's an AU1200. Um, I think that's about, it looks like it could be 400 megahertz, judging by the part number. Uh, this is actually an ARM based processor, which means technically if, if you had a way of installing it, you could put uh, Android on these and um, use them as uh, GPS navigational devices. So uh, that's one possibility, um, what if I get time to do that. Uh, there's also a small oscillator down here running at 46 megahertz. There's, uh, what else is on here? Uh, to be honest, that's about it. Um, oh yeah, there is a small connector just here. Let me show you that. Right, now this connector here, um, it's a four pin connector and it's next to the LCD. Um, so I'm most likely that's going to be a touch screen controller, so you could actually put a touch screen on these. Um, all you'd need to do is look up the part number, um, which is here on the LCD, and get a compatible um, touch screen unit to fit over that, and you could turn that into a full um, touch screen Android uh, sort of mini tablet in a way. Um, I'm not sure of the resolution on this screen, it doesn't look too high. Uh, most likely 200 and something by 400 and something. Um, I don't have the exact specifications, I'm sure I could Google it, but uh, yeah, overall uh, very good build quality. There's a there, there's a long bodge wire here, which is going from, uh, where's that going from? Is that? Yeah, it's from one of these little chips here. I wasn't sure if it was from the tactile switch, but that's going from the uh, one of these small chips over here to uh, one of these chip resistors just here. Uh, let's see if there's any more bodge wires on here. Uh, nope, I think that's it. Oh no, there is a very small bodge wire just here. Uh, let me zoom in on that. Yeah, as you see, that's going from this uh, controller chip here over to this little chip resistor. So these are minor modifications which have been made um, after the board has been manufactured. So, um, oh, and there's also oh, another bodge wire. Let me just take that back out. Uh, there's another bodge wire just here running from this connector here. Now, I'm not sure what this connector is actually for. Um, it could be for um, flashing the... Uh, flashing the memory to start with um, to update the firmware initially in the factory I'm not sure um, but it looks too solidly built for that uh, most likely that's for an additional uh, something, something uh, maybe an additional interface or something like that maybe a um, USB or something like that I'm not 100% certain what that's for um, Obviously the, the, the connector gives no indication as to what it's for and the location doesn't help either because as it sits as it sits in here there's nothing else you could really fit into this case it's too crowded um, one other thing I will say there's a, a small blob of um, glue which is over this memory card to hold it in place but unfortunately it doesn't do a very good job as you can see um, it just sits on the top it's very rubbery it's not um, not the greatest not the greatest adhesive to try and hold that in place but um, I suppose it, it would have done the job for a small time but overall, um, yeah, quite a good bit of kit. Probably would have cost a small fortune, maybe three or four, maybe even five hundred pounds a piece when they were new. Um, what's more, you would have had to buy the software again from uh, from Node to uh, operate and run them, and you would have had to have uh, compatible content as well. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a very, very nice bit of kit, really. If I can get Android put onto these, uh, I'd be quite happy. Uh, also, if I could get um, maybe some touch screens uh, to go in the front, then I'd turn these into Android tablets. But unfortunately, because, as I say, the company's gone out of business, it's going to be quite difficult to get any technical details for it. The, the brief technical details I could find on, on, uh, on Google earlier, they weren't incredibly technical. It was more about maintenance and such. Um, there's one other thing I've just noticed, there's a small tactile switch on the top here, but there's no um, connector on the top, so I'm guessing maybe that's a re- ah, yes, that, that's most likely a reset button because there's a small pinhole just in the top here, I didn't notice that before, so that's most likely a, a, a hard reset button, so um, yeah, it's quite a nice bit of kit, let's just plug these back in, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try and power these up today, um, I'm going to try and get these working over the next few days if I can. Um, I'll siren power one up and uh, I'm not sure how to put anything onto one of these um, because it's obviously not going to be x86 or x64 compatible so the chances are if I put this into a card reader all it's going to do is just say to me 
uh, format the card or words along that line so um, it's going to be very unlikely um, for me to be able to put something directly onto this card I'd be very surprised if I could um, so I'll have to look into it and uh, maybe go on a few forums and see if anyone else has done anything with these but again because there weren't many of these manufactured and they were for a very niche market they're not a mass manufactured product um, it's probably going to be quite difficult to get any any information or um, anything to do with them so uh, but, you know I mean I'll do my best I'll see what I can do with them um, as you, as you probably well know, I don't like throwing stuff out, so uh, and I don't like just leaving stuff. So um, if I can get something, if I. Can